Hey everyone, welcome and thanks for tuning in with today's video of In the Spread. My name is Captain Nick Kepalitis and we're going to be fishing in Central Florida today. More specifically, we're on the Kissimmee Chain of Lakes. Uh, Lake Toho is what we're going to be hitting today. And we're going to be talking about live bait fishing. I get a lot of people that, that will ask me, you know, hey, I've got, only got a short period of time. I'm coming in from out of town. What is going to give me the best chance of catching the most fish and the biggest fish? And my answer to that, as much as I love fishing with artificial baits, is live bait is the ticket. Um, that is just what's going to give you the best chance of catching that trophy fish. Uh, so we're going to be talking about that today. A lot of people think you can just throw a shiner out and it's going to be a done deal. You've got a trophy catch on your line. And that's not necessarily true. There's a lot of different factors and there's a lot of different variables that play into that. And we're going to talk about all those today. We're going to cover a variety of different techniques. I'm going to tell you why we do those techniques, where is best to use those techniques. Um, and ultimately, my goal is to provide you guys with the information needed to make you an overall better angler, but also help you catch those fish that you're desiring to catch. So uh, stay tuned and uh, get ready for an action-packed video here on the Kissimmee Channel Lakes. Thanks. What we're fishing here is a big hydrilla flat. Hydrilla is very well known in the state of Florida. It's probably one of our most prominent vegetations. Um, as we get into this time of year, you know, where <clears throat> it's a little bit warmer, this stuff flourishes. It can grow up to an inch per day. And what it tends to do is it tops out, as you can see off here. It almost looks like carpet. I mean, it's so thick. So, uh, what we're going to be fishing is not necessarily what you can see, but as the, it comes off that hard line, there's patches of this hydrilla that kind of slowly tapers off. And what happens is in between these clumps of hydrilla, uh, these fish tend to spawn. They'll, they'll move up and they'll use their, their tails to kind of fan out a nice area where they can do their business. And what we're doing is we're basically going to toss our wild shiner out there and, and kind of work, you know, maneuver through these clumps of grass. Uh, with hopes of getting it in their house and uh, you know, enticing some bites. This time of year, these fish don't always necessarily eat because they're hungry. A lot of times they eat because they're territorial. There's something that's in their house that's threatening their, their fry, and they'll end up eating the bait simply because they're upset with it or they just don't want it in their house. So let's go ahead and see if we can get one of these to bite. These are good hardy baits, they'll swim really well. Um, so if all of a sudden you see your baits swimming really well and it just stops, nine times out of 10, it has found something to hide in, i.e. one of those clumps of grass. Anything that these bait fish can find to hide, they'll bed down in it because you know they know that they're vulnerable when they're out in the open. So occasionally I'll check my, you know, I'll just slightly raise my rod tip just to make sure they haven't got bogged down in some of that grass. And in most cases, if you do get hung up and you pull it out, that's when you'll get your bite. So let's Sometimes see. out of 10, when you're live bait fishing with you know, wild shiners or you know, any kind of big hardy bait like this, uh, nine times out of 10, you're gonna know you're about to get the bite before you get the bite. And what I mean by that is your bait's gonna get nervous, kind of like this one is. You see our cork out there. That fish is dancing, he's swimming. He's doing exactly what we want him to do. You want this bait to act as sporadic uh, as possible to attract the, you know, those bigger fish or just any fish really in general. Um, but that's exactly what that bait is doing is exactly what we want our bait to do is just to swim. And what I try to do, you notice I got some slack out here. What I try to do is I want that bait to have freedom of movement. Okay, I do not want to hinder his movement. Anything that you do, you know, pulling your line tight or keeping that bait fish from, here we go. That's a better fish, my friends. A little better fish than the first one. They're slowly getting bigger. Oh yeah. Nice fish, beautiful fish. You can see he didn't get our bait. And dance for us, girl. All right, she's she's had enough. She's hooked right in the top of the mouth, so I'm going to go ahead and lip her.
beautiful Florida bass. And where that hook is, is exactly where you want. Right here in the roof of the mouth, that is the hardest part, most boniest part of the, the bass's mouth. So, you know, when you hook them there, it takes a little, little bit of force to get that hook to come out. Um, so you have a better chance of actually landing that fish. Now, obviously, you know, we can't necessarily determine where the hook goes every single time, but that's why we stress when you set the hook, set straight up, not to the side. And that's what we're looking at here. So let's put her back and we'll see if we can get, uh, get her grandmother. Well, we got the dance. It was a little later, but she danced for us. So.